one big problem that lets graphite down, and that is graphite shine. This is where the darkest parts of your drawing reflect lots of light and become very shiny. So the best way to get rid of graphite shine in your drawings is to try using some different types of pencils for your darkest areas rather than using the really soft graphite pencils. Because the softer the graphite pencil is, the more shine it will produce. So when you use the really soft 6B or 8B graphite pencils for your really dark areas of shading, then you will get really shiny results. So there are a few other pencils you can try to get really jet matte results. Firstly is the Statler Mars Lumograph Black range of pencils. And these are great, and I've done a whole video on these pencils which you can check out using the card up above. But this will allow you to get those darker areas in whilst giving you more of a matte result. They're really good for that. Also, you can try using a black colored pencil. I recommend the Faber-Castell black polychromos pencil. And this is great. It is a little bit shinier than the some of the other options that I'm going to go through, but it does work really well with your graphite pencils. They work really well together and blend together really nicely. And this will actually get you darker results than your graphite will anyway. Now the next pencils you can use are carbon pencils. Now these will give you a really matte result. You will hardly get any shine when you use carbon pencils. But they are less smooth, they do have more of a chalky, dry feel to them. So they do work slightly differently than the graphite, whereas the polychromos and Mars Lumograph are more seamless with the graphite. Same with charcoal. Charcoal is another brilliant pencil you can use to get in really dark black values. And this is the mattest sort of appearance you'll get using the charcoal pencils. They are completely match, you won't get any shine when you use these, but they are a little trickier to use with your graphite, but of course you can just use charcoal and carbon or all of these pencils on their own. And you can see that from top to bottom, the top we have the shiniest results and then all the way to the charcoal at the bottom is the, the most matte result. And you can decide which pencils would work best for you depending on what level of shine you're comfortable with and also how closely you want your other pencils to perform with your graphite, whether you want them to be really close to the graphite in terms of how they lay down and how they blend, or if you want a really matte result and are happy to work with more drier, more chalky pencils like the charcoal. Now, another way you can reduce your graphite is to use less pressure on your pencil when you're laying down your graphite. When you just build up light layers of the graphite, you won't get as much shine. Whereas when you burnish and press down really hard with your pencil, especially those soft pencils, you can see that that's when it becomes really reflective. So I did both of these with the same pencil, but when I press super hard, you can see we get so much shine because I've really burnished that pencil, pressed it down into the paper. So just by changing how hard you press on the pencil, you'll greatly reduce your amount of shine. Already you can see how just changing one pencil can make a massive impact on how your drawings look. And if improving your drawings is something that you're really struggling with, then I also recommend checking out my free guide, 10 Steps to Better Artwork, where I go through my step-by-step -step process for how to start seeing improvement in your drawings really fast. I'll leave a link to that guide at the top of the description. And now let's go through some other techniques that you can use to minimize the shine in your drawings. To start off this demonstration, I will be using my regular graphite pencils. But like I said, the key to using graphite pencils and not getting much shine is to actually only use light layers and not press too hard on your pencil. And even better, use some of the harder graphite pencils like the HB or just the 2H because the darker and softer the pencil is like the B, 2B, 4B, the more shine you'll get. So just sticking to those lighter pencils will help you to reduce your shine. 
So as you can see, I'm lightly using my graphite pencil to establish where the different values are in the sphere. I am sort of giving the impression of where those darker shadows are, but not pressing too hard, because we'll do that with the other pencils. Another great way to reduce the shine in your drawings is to blend your shading with a tissue or a cloth. I found that this really gets rid of any sort of shine, as long as you haven't burnished or pressed really hard with your pencil. And then for your darkest areas, I'm going to use, in this case, a carbon pencil. And once you've actually blended with the tissue as well, your light layers of shading, it actually becomes easier for the carbon or charcoal pencil to stick on top of those other layers of graphite because charcoal and carbon does struggle sticking on top of graphite, especially charcoal. So often you'll want to sort of not put any graphite on your darkest areas when you're doing your shading, sort of preserve those areas so you can just add the charcoal to those areas. Or if you do shade very lightly with your graphite and blend it out in this way, then your pencil should be able to stick on top of the graphite. Your charcoal pencil should be able to adhere to the paper, especially if you are using a paper that has got a bit more of a tooth to it, has a bit more of a textured surface. And you will want to use more of a textured surface if you're using charcoal, just so that the paper can grip onto the charcoal pencil. I'm just using the eraser to add a couple of highlights to the sphere. But in this case, we've been able to create a really matte sphere using our graphite, but then just using a couple of other pencils to really darken up those shadows without getting the shine. And using the tissue and the cotton bud also really helped to minimize the shiny effect with this sphere. Now, like I said, you can also use a black colored pencil, which works really well with your graphite. So here I've got the black polychromos pencil and I've just laid down some graphite shading. And you can see that when I then take this colored pencil, it actually layers really easily on top of that swatch of graphite shading that I've done. You can go straight on top of the graphite and just start shading and adding in those darker tones, which you can't do with the charcoal. You have to plan a bit more because charcoal doesn't stick on top of graphite very well. So if you do want more of a seamless sort of workflow, then I would recommend trying out the black colored pencil because this works with graphite a little bit easier and it does get you really dark, jet black sort of dark values, but it will give you a little more shine, but not as much as graphite will. So it's sort of a nice in between if you are used to the feel of graphite and you don't want to use charcoal, which is quite dry. And if you don't mind a little bit of shine in your work. And so you can see that I went in with the graphite, I did the initial layer of shading with the graphite, blended it with the tissue, and then went straight over the top with the black polychromos to add in the shadows before going in with my Tombow Mono stick eraser just to pull up a few highlights. And that's the great thing about all of these pencils as well, is that they erase just as easily as the graphite. You can add in all of your highlights still with your eraser, so the techniques that you're used to doing with your graphite pencils, you should be able to do with all of these other types of pencils as well. And here you can see this finished swatch of hair, which again has a very matte result. Now let's move on to a whole drawing demonstration. And for this one, I am going to be drawing a lion using my 2B graphite pencil, my stick eraser, a carbon pencil, a cotton bud for blending. That's all I'm going to be using. And because I said that the carbon doesn't really layer on top of the graphite, I'm actually going to go in first with the carbon pencil and sort of establish where those darkest shadows would be. That way I can then go over the top and fill in the other areas with the graphite, but I'll know that I've got the carbon pencil down on those really dark areas first. And I find that doing it this way round, adding in the darkest values first, 
also makes it a little bit easier to judge all of the other values rather than trying to shade in your lightest values on white paper. I find that it can be a bit hard to judge your values when you're just drawing on white paper. Whereas adding in those darkest values first, those jet black values, I feel like it helps me figure out what the lightest values should be. As you can see, this carbon pencil is given such black results, which it is very hard to achieve with graphite, even when you are using the 8B pencil, because graphite is more of a gray metallic type of pencil, and it is just hard to get those rich black tones with graphite. It's more of a silvery look to those pencils. So even if you don't mind graphite shine, I still recommend trying out these other pencils for your darkest areas because they just help to make your drawing pop and stand out so much more. It gives your drawing more depth and contrast. So it doesn't matter if you're happy with the shine and that isn't a problem for you, you can still benefit from using carbon pencils or the Statesler Mars Lumograph pencils or if, if you don't mind the shine at all, I would recommend using the black Polychromos pencil because that works so well with graphite, but it just gives you these really black tones. Now, I haven't really used many other black colour pencils. I've only really worked with the black polychromos by Faber-Castell with my graphite, so I can't vouch for the other brands of colour pencil. So you'll just need to experiment to see if they also work well with the graphite. You can see that I've covered in that background with a nice black tone as well and already the line looks super dramatic just from using the carbon pencil. You can see what a long way that one pencil has gone to producing a really realistic sort of dramatic drawing. But now I'm going in with that graphite pencil and this is a mechanical pencil with a 2B lead and I'm just filling in very lightly some of the details and lighter shading. And a mechanical pencil is brilliant for the fine details. And I personally love it because you don't have to sharpen it. You just have to click the top of the pencil and more of the lead will come out. And you're able to do really detailed, tiny markings with this pencil, which I am using to create the fur texture at the moment. And I hope you can see what I mean by the fact that it's now easier to judge these mid-tone values now that I've got in those darkest areas. Otherwise, I've found that when you're just drawing on white paper, it's easy to make your shading too light for the lighter mid-tones, and then you get in your shadows and realize that your lightest areas are too light and you need to go darker. I'm now going in with my cotton bud and just blending over some of the shading just to get rid of a bit of the graininess and to smudge it together a little bit. But you don't have to blend every single area of a drawing. It's good to let some of that texture show through. You don't want it to look too airbrushed. I'm also going back in with the carbon pencil and just adjusting some of the darkest shadows. And what's great about this drawing is it's super dark, but there's hardly any shine to it at all. For this type of drawing where you are using charcoal or carbon pencils, I would recommend something like a hot pressed watercolor paper or a medium surface drawing paper. If you use a really smooth paper, you might find that it's hard for the charcoal and carbon to grip onto the paper. But just experiment with whatever paper you have to find what works best for you. Finally, I'm going in with my stick eraser and just creating a bit more texture and detail and also pulling up some highlights. And the Tombow Mono Eraser is great for creating that furry texture for pulling up highlights in the eyes but also creating textures and details in the fur. So you really don't have to just use the eraser to remove mistakes or to create highlights. You can use it to create texture in your drawings as well. It's a really brilliant tool for drawing. So I'm just finishing up this drawing, adding a few 
fly away bits of fur to add a bit more motion to the mane so it doesn't look so rigid and uniformed and these tiny details will just take your drawing to that next level. And you'll see just how effective this eraser is when I start to do the whiskers because at the moment there's no whiskers. So just using the stick eraser and going over and removing that carbon pencil, which is really dark, you can see that we're able to get it really light. We're able to bring in those whiskers, even though we didn't preserve them. So I definitely think this is a must have tool to have. And I've done a whole video about this Tombow Mono eraser and how you can use it to improve your drawings. So again, I'll leave that in a card up above. Those are my tips on how to reduce the amount of graphite shine in your drawings. If you want more tips on how to improve your drawings, then remember to check out that free guide, 10 Steps to Better Artwork, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.